Hi my loves, welcome back to a new video. So today we're going to be doing some baking. Finally, I know you guys have been waiting for this video and it's here. Trust me, it's here. And today we've actually got a super easy, no oven bake cake recipe um, that I'm going to try and do for the first time ever. But before we jump into the video, I'm going to do my post notification shout out. Today's one's going to go to... Aurora Glam so thank you so much for hitting that bell button I really appreciate it and if you guys want to get one next time all you have to do is subscribe press the bell button and let me know in the comments below when you've done so so like I said I'm going to be doing a no bake cake we're going to be using a pan on the stove and hopefully this goes out really well it's really easy and I pray that this goes well guys now the recipe that I'm following is by Emma Goodies she has a really cool channel with amazing recipes I definitely recommend it um, and I'll link that in the info box but I will be following her recipe in today's video so the first thing you want to grab is your frying pan the recipe says to use an eight inch heavy bottom pan I know this is an a heavy bottom pan but it's I don't think it's eight inch because this is definitely a bigger one so I doubled up the recipe here I'm using 60 grams of unsalted butter and you don't want to fry or sizzle this butter you just want to put the heat on low and let this melt slowly I like to swirl it around in the pan just to help it um, melt a bit easier and also grabbed a spatula um, a silicone spatula to kind of like crush up the butter a bit and speed up the process because this was taking longer than I thought <laughs> so once the butter is nicely melted I'm gonna grab some unsweetened cocoa powder I use the Bourneville one which is really really good and I'm using 50 grams of this and this process is actually called blooming I think and I remember seeing a comment in one of my videos where you guys mentioned this and this is my first time trying it it's where you uh, mix the cocoa powder in something warm or hot to help uh, release the aromas or the taste of the cocoa powder um i don't know but my the cake was yummy in the end so maybe this process does really work you know i've never tried it before by the way if you find this bit so satisfying to watch make sure to hit that thumbs up button because it really helps you go out <laughs> So I'm now going to put this to the side to help it cool down a bit before I put the rest of the ingredients in. So now I'm putting some um, caster sugar in, it's 140 grams, and two eggs, and I'm going to quickly whisk this in. I'm using a silicone whisk so I don't damage my pan because this is like my favourite pan. I literally cook all my stuff in it. I got it from Tesco and it's by the brand Go Cook. So yeah, you just want to give this a good mix, make sure everything is incorporated and also make sure to get the edges as well because sometimes some of the mixture just stays there and you kind of sometimes miss that out. Um, and now I'm going to put in my dry ingredients, I'm using 80 grams of self-raising flour. Um, I only have self-raising so that's why I use all the time and as well with 120 grams of milk. And you just want to slowly mix this in. I did sift my flour in so that I don't get any lumps or anything when I'm mixing this. And yeah, it was just really easy. The whole process was like so smooth, very convenient, very easy and actually quite fun. I love that my favorite thing about baking is just the mixing part. <laughs> So now I'm going to use also one teaspoon of baking powder. This is optional, but I really wanted that rise in my cake. So I just added a bit more of this, even though it's already in a self-raising flour. But um, I always tend to do this. I always add a bit more of baking powder. So now I'm just grabbing my uh, silicone spatula to make sure that everything is nicely incorporated. Because as you can see here, there was some of the mixture stuck at the bottom. So yeah, now I'm going to put this to cook. I'm going to... Um, cover it I actually found this as a cover but I didn't like it because it didn't have a hole in it so I ended up changing it and I found this one right here um, and as you can see there's a little um, hole in it so the air can come through so I'm gonna cook this on a low heat for 20 minutes because I did double up the recipe make sure to keep an eye on it I kept checking every now and then but after 20 minutes it looks like this and it rose really well is that even a word a rose oh my god um, so I took a toothpick to check that the cake was cooked and the toothpick came out clean um, so that was all good and I also poked a bunch of holes in it because we're gonna put some milk in to the cake afterwards um, and after this I'm just gonna let my cake cool so whilst the cake is cooling I'm gonna do my fudge ganache kind of thing I'm using 200 grams of double cream and 35% milk chocolate and I'm just gonna put this on simmering water 
and we're gonna melt these two together this is so satisfying i love this bit um this was by far the best ganache i've ever ever made in my whole baking experience <laughs> okay this is a huge milestone for me um because i don't really like rich chocolate so this was just perfect i also added two large tea uh, tablespoons of nutella and this is optional but this really gave a nice taste to the ganache and to be honest it's quite liquidy now but once you cool it and it, once it's in the fridge it's actually very fudgy it's so 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 nice i could eat that whole bowl like no joke okay now we're going back to the cake and i'm gonna pour some milk into the cake i actually made chocolate milk which is where i just warm the milk and i put a teaspoon of cocoa powder in and i mix that up really well and we're just going to pour this directly onto the cake and make sure to do this all over and don't miss any areas I also used a fork to poke some more holes into the cake just to help the milk go into it easily because it was just kind of like sitting there and then you just want it to look like this and we can go ahead and pour our ganache on top and oh my god this stuff was so lush and I actually thought maybe this was a bit too much but it was actually the perfect amount so I'm just going to even this out with my spatula and I left it in the fridge for like 30 minutes. It was definitely better and more firm the next day and the milk settled into the cake way better. But um, even after 30 minutes it's actually quite yummy and it cut really nicely as well. But this is what it looks like and I was actually quite proud of myself. I pulled this off. I made a cake in a pan. Like what? I swear, who needs an oven? Alright guys, it's now taste test time. I've had this um, cake in the fridge for a bit to help it cool down, but I'm so excited to taste this right now. I'm actually really pleased at how well it's risen too. That's a really nice cake. Like, you, you would never guess that this was made in a pan. Oh, and the milk definitely gave some, like, moisture into the cake. That is definitely a very yummy cake, very easy to make. I've got some chocolate on my face. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. I will be making cupcakes soon, so make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for that. And, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!